What do you love to cook? Eggs. Easy as fuck. Healthy as fuck. Tasty as fuck. No complaints. Chili. This year I have really experimented with chili. Slightly adjusting seasoning and ingredients. It's pretty tasty and wholesome. Plus you can serve it a few ways so it doesn't get too boring. I'll share some of my findings if people are interested. I love making things with dough, pasta, noodles, bowsy, breads and pizza. I find it greatly soothing watching yeast do its hard work and imagining magical sparks as enzymes. Get going and gluten develops. As well as a great treat at the end. My family disagrees with me that the dough is part of the reward. But I know. Carrot wistful carrot sigh. Pasta. So many things you can do with it. Toss it with some sauce. Toss it with some pesto. Toss it at your kids. The opportunities are endless. Dad, I'm hungry, smack. Homemade Alfredo with my girlfriend. It's delicious. Is there much of her left? Sloppy seconds. I also like homemade Alfredo with this guy's girlfriend. It's delicious. Bolognese sauce. Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. There's this thing my girlfriend taught me how to cook. A Texas barbecue escalope is what she calls it and it's delicious. It's a chicken breast sliced open. Tenderized with this wooden hammer thing and laid out flat. You get two bowls. One with egg yolk and the other with breadcrumbs. Cover the chicken breast in the yolk and then roll it in the breadcrumb bowl so that the breadcrumbs stick to it and then stick it in the oven for a bit. Just long enough to get it cooked to the point that the breadcrumbs are going to stay on the chicken properly. Then you take it out. Pop it in the frying pan until one side is fully cooked. Then you take it out and use a knife to spread barbecue sauce over the cooked side and sprinkle some cheese on it. Pop it back in the frying pan until the other side is cooked. The cheese melts in the process. It's bloody delicious. So like barbecue chicken fried chicken with cheese. Shrimp fried rice. Specifically for breakfast I make extra rice and extra stir-fried veggies just so I'll have leftovers to make fried rice with. There's a grocery near me that carries bags of frozen, salad, shrimp, rice, veg, shrimp, egg, soy, toasted sesame, breakfast, scallops the ocean's most perfect food, preferably seared on hot cast iron. One of my favorites dot but very rich. I also love a Cajun calamari. Sauce. A big oil pot of sauce. Sauce. Source. Source. SOS. Sauce. SARS. Sears. Authentic ramen. Please show us the way. What do you do? Cream pies. Some people like making them. Some like to eat them straight out of the oven. Some like them on their body. Me personally. I like them in my ass. A man of culture. Cream pies are tasty, especially from Boston. Chocolate chip cookies. Nothing can beat just making chocolate chip cookies. Eating them beats it. I love baking cakes. I read this as when. When do I love to cook? When I'm not hungry. What do I love to cook? Bread. Cinnamon buns. I love to cook mostly anything. But it's really satisfying to watch your science experiment grow. It's alive. And then you can eat it. I taught myself to make Korean food with Mung Chi's book and YouTube videos. And make it all the time. Enjoy my recipe. See you next time. Bye. She's so cute. Buffalo wings. Edit. I don't really love to cook them but it's my best thing I can cook and my family likes me to cook them some. Sometimes we order a pizza and just eat homemade wings. Eggs Benedict. Hard but rewarding. Sounds pretty cumber tilde tilde some tilde tilde batch to me. Meh. Ah yes, an acquired taste for sure. Pasta. What kind? Tagliatelle carbonara with some fresh spinach. Oh. My. God. Yes. Can I come over to your house for dinner? And can Timmy come? We all know Timmy fucking died. I know, right? I'm trying to elicit the help of this frog. Help. Mac and cheese for life. I have a baked mac and cheese recipe made with sharp cheddar and bread crumbs. I don't make it often. But it was going to be a side if I ever opened a barbecue restaurant. 
Chicken parm is here the only real food I know how to make. Blondies. Gordon Ramsay taught me how to make them perfectly. Always a massive hit but has three sticks of butter. Sue. Please link the recipe! Exclamation mark. They sound amazing. The perfect steakhouse meal. New York strip steaks. Grilled to medium rare. With pan seared mushrooms and a side of garlic mashed potatoes. And if I really like you. Or if the group is a little larger. Needing to spread the side dishes a bit more. Add oven roasted asparagus and oven roasted Brussels sprouts. Cream cheese danishes. Those tasty fucks are really fun to do. Large scallops and angel hair pasta. It's so flipping easy to make. And scallops are fantastic for me right now since I just had a gallbladder removal surgery and need to be on a low-fat diet. I highly recommend trying your hand at scallops and pairing it with any pasta or veggies. There are a lot of things I like to cook but candy is one I really enjoy. I make almond roca and a peanut butter cup to die for. I call it Hawaiian breakfast. Although it's something I eat usually once a week for dinner. Steamed white rice. Spam and over easy eggs. So easy but so damn delicious. I'll never get sick of making it. Corn chowder. So easy, filling and nearly impossible to make taste bad. Bacon or no bacon? Bacon. Thank God. To me corn chowder without bacon is so disappointing. Penne a la vodka. The payoff is so delicious. Especially since it's actually really easy and quick to make. Pasta it's the most versatile and best meal to make for any occasion. It's even good for romantic dinners or a lazy day and it's perfect. Philly cheese steak sammies. Provolone or Merck's cheddar. Edit. There is no wrong answer. Provolone. But honestly, almost any cheese would be good on one. Breakfast is my favorite but I love cooking in general. Tacos. It's the only thing I make that comes out consistently delicious. Everything else seems like so much effort goes in for it to wind up tasting nasty or not as I had hoped. Ratatouille. But instead of adding sliced tomatoes I make a tomato sauce to pour over it. Last time I made it. The sauce was bitchin'. Dogs. Ah, a fellow KFC employee then? Do you like it hot? Drop it like it hot. Sup dog. Not much. I'll just walk you to your car doig. And I'll drive you back to yours Doug. Favorite key and peel sketch? Chili. White chicken or beef and chorizo. Doesn't matter. Just love a pot of thick, spicy chili. Steak. I'm not much of a cook but when it comes to grilling a steak I can make the grill sing. What's your favorite cut for the grill? I usually go for ribeye but I also love T-bones and filet mignon. Those are all solid choices. I'm a NY strip guy. But that has more to do with fat content than grill ability. Not really cooking, but I fucking love chopping vegetables while drinking wine and listening to a podcast. Asparagus. I'm a lazy cook. Asparagus requires little attention no matter how you cook it my self-esteem. I love to make meatloaf. It's so fun squishing all the ingredients together. I love to cook soups in the fall and winter. Creamy tomato bale parmesan. Vegetable. Asiago bisque. And if you count it as a soup. Chili. In the summer and early, mid-fall. I really live to work the grill. Chicken. Steak. Corn. Vegetable and meat kebabs. And sometimes I will smoke a brisket. Year-round I enjoy making homemade pizza. I hope to have a wood-fired oven one day. Dumplings. I love making the pretty little wraps. I find it therapeutic. There is this crazy dish that I cook maybe once every five years. It's an insanely complicated recipe from the 1700s that starts with boning an entire chicken. Without cutting it into pieces, you cut it open along the spine and then bone out from there while keeping the whole chicken intact. You stuff it with layers of force meat, truffles, and nuts. So it shut, and cook it. Sometimes I just really want to cook something ridiculous. And this dish always scratches that itch. It's an all day, lose yourself in your cooking task. Eggplants. Just why? I can't taste anything and the consistency is mushy. It's not always mushy. People just don't know how to prepare them. 
At home you gotta salty ever love and fuck out of it and let it dry out. Kinda like tofu. Prepared well it's delicious and prepared poorly it's baffling anyone would eat it. Oh I never heard about drying it out and all. Guess I need a new recipe. It helps a lot. You can also learn to tell if eggplants are male or female. The male eggplants have fewer bitter seeds. I adore eggplant, but ironically, am mildly allergic to them so I don't cook them anymore. Fajitas, French toast, grenades, just remember to start counting it too. Who are you, who is so wise in the ways of science? An old school cod player who learned the hard way, over and over. Ah, a fellow man of culture. Do you remember the feeling you got the first time you played COD2? Especially after waiting so long after the original it was epic. I actually joined during the Golden Black Ops era, but I still know the feeling. They're butchering it now, but back in the day, it felt incredible to load up the new COD games. Black Ops 2 was a masterpiece. I might not be as old school as you, but I love the game a decade strong. French omelette, took a while to perfect it, just butter eggs and salt. I love making chili, smoked pulled pork, anything delicious. My boyfriend pointed out tonight that I get really upset when something doesn't turn out 100%. Perfect and I don't want to serve it. It's true, because, for me cooking is all about making the people I love happy. And I hold that standard high. I don't want to serve them good food. I want that shit to be swanjin, dan dan noodles, porky, gingery, garlicky, peanut buttery goodness in a bowl. I wish I knew how to do this but with rice noodles. Swapping rice noodles for ordinary ones makes the taste off. North Carolina black bear, little bit of salt, pepper and garlic. To date, of the bear I have cooked and offered it to people I work with and friends. No one knew it was bear meat. Tastes better than most beef from the store, followed by a thing called a fatty, a bacon weave, then put ground pork on top of that, not sausage, then stuff it with mushrooms and cheese, roll it up where the bacon is on the outside, apply a brown sugar based dry rub, smoke for 4 hours with maple wood, traditional Sunday roast lamb, with roast potatoes, the kind that are crispy on the outside and soft on the inside, Steamed veggies on the side and gravy made out of pan drippings and beef stock. With baked apples for dessert. No joke, I love microwaving stuff. There's an art to it. I hear you, there has to be. How else can I burn popo corn so often? One time I met this guy who explained the beauty of a microwave. I swear he taught me a lesson on it for about an hour. Rice and beans, I know it's plain but it's so good Mexican style. I could live off refried beans and Mexican rice. A quality pan of lasagna. Too many people go for quantity when they make it and end up with a boring dish that began with so much potential. Kraft mac and cheese, hopefully in the future I have the energy to make homemade mac and cheese. There's a great video on Bon Appetit's YouTube channel that shows you how to upgrade Kraft Mac and Cheese. I recommend you watch it if you want something newish but still fairly easy. I know how to make homemade mac and cheese but the thing is I'm too lazy to get the ingredients in. I'm scared that it's gonna be expensive. I know it's gonna be more healthier than the boxed version. I'm just scared of the price. Just adding some extra cheese into the mix and toasted breadcrumbs on the top will make it so much better. Trust me, Kraft is an imported productive here. So I tried it once because wow novelty. I like it better than all the recipes I tried. It's not widely available, which makes it an even better treat. Yeah I think it's a better choice for boxed mac and cheese. My mom isn't a huge fan of boxed things but likes Kraft Mac and cheese a lot and finds it more better. Barbecue ribs. My wife and I have owned two crappy electric smokers after my charcoal smoker died off. Shell rusted out, and got fed up with the crappy wiring used on the heating elements. We had electric beats so you didn't have to babysit it. 
We finally decided to research and set a budget of $1,500 for a new grill, smoker. One camp chef would win later and I cannot even describe the level of difference it made. If you can do any barbecue correctly in a smoker, I'd say you won the cookout. Getting a good smoker is worth it if you use it enough times. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.